Laura from Lawrence Branch and today's project is inspired by this website. Creating cut paper maps with illustrator Christian Robinson. And I came across this on my Flipboard account uh, a couple of weeks ago and I liked it and I knew that I probably wanted to do it and I hadn't even really looked at the content of the article. Um, and I started assembling my materials and then when I went back to look, um, this young man is actually a children's illustrator. So win-win, I'm a children's librarian and I do have that book in my library's collection which I haven't gotten my hands on yet but I soon should be able to and I intend to read it. So what he does is talks about um, if, you've ever, if you're ever feeling uninspired or a little bit lost and you need some inspiration to do a spatial map and he goes through it in his video and I would like to just show you a quick skim of what he shows us. Based on that tutorial that we just saw, I created three projects, and this is the first out of the three. And so for me, I actually had this matted board, and it's got someone's name on the other side of it, and I salvaged it, and it was actually still in its package. So I took it out of the matting, and I flipped it over. I'll show you in my pictures. And I decided that I wanted to make a spatial map of my library department. And as a matter of fact, this is not to scale. I, I made it into a long rectangle because that's what I had to work with. But in fact, our department is really more of a, uh, a square. But the nice point, uh, the nice thing about this was that it allowed me to um, leave a little bit of extra space so that I could use more text. And let me take it out of this plastic in case there's a reflection. So as you see, underneath of here I've taped it down, but there's a girl's name, I think it was Chloe or something like that. Flipped it over and I went through magazines and I clipped out uh, different things that could represent the stacks in our collection. And as I said, I did this from memory and this is a good exercise for you to do um, for adults or if you want to lead uh, young people to do something like this. And I haven't seen my department in over uh, two and a half months, but I have worked in the building for 20 or something years. So this is based on my memory. And after I glued down my stacks, I used some of my uh, stir sticks. I glued those on. And so I will just quickly tell you, this is the desk where uh, we sit and we help patrons. This is our activity room where we do story time. We've done hundreds and hundreds and for me thousands of story times and programs in this room over the years, me since 1999. And we have all different areas and so I hope that whatever library you use, there's the same philosophy in your children's department. And so I chose words that I thought were the most important and those are enjoy, participate, Stay a while, smile, free, fun, choices, welcome all. Here's our checkout desk. They're very friendly too. Ask, ask anybody for help. 24 seven, we are available, uh, our virtual branch is available now and has been used more than ever. Friendly staff, books and much more. Learn, read, discover, 
access respect. So I had a lot of fun making this. And the way that I made my words, by the way, let me show you this. I used my vellum paper, which is opaque. You can see through it a little bit. I've used this before. I actually salvaged three rolls of this as well. And I used my solid tempera paints. So if you uh, write on this, and you could use just a thin white paper if you don't have this kind of paper. And I simply put a coat of the paint. And then when it dried on the other side, I used my Sharpies to mention the terms or the words, my descriptors. And that dried very quickly and I cut it out into the shapes that I wanted. And so this reminded me almost a little bit of having your own uh, washi tape and, and, you, and making it customized in whatever colors that you want. So this I may hang in my little office when I go back to the library, but I had a lot of fun doing this. And as I said, um, you could make this for a place that you know well, a, a space in your home, your garden, your own office, a place from your childhood, and it's a lot of fun to do. So that's, that's project number one. this next map. Um, I know that I want it to be nature-based and we like to hang out with our friends down in Asbury. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to use this opaque paper as the beach and I've got blue uh, for the ocean and all I've done so far, these are file folders. This is the best uh, paper that I've got um, at home right now, non-fading. So, so far I've glued two of the brown ones together and I'm waiting for those to dry and I'm um, listening to some podcasts while I craft. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this and sketch it out. So again, I hope to have the boardwalk, maybe with these stirs, the beach, uh, hanging out, the music scene in Asbury, and this is gonna be fun for me to do. Let's see how it turns out. <laughs> so here's how it turned out. It's kinda cool. Can't go wrong with the ocean on the right hand side. Here's the boardwalk. Up here in the upper corner is Convention Hall. And you can see that up the ways behind me. And here's the inlet. Down here is Bradley Beach. Up here is Asbury. The pony is the stone pony, which is not so far away. And the tie dye represents the Asbury. This is not to scale by any means, but it's definitely something I was able to make without looking at any maps or anything like that. And that's what you want to do. You want to make these up from some places that are special to you and that you can do without looking online or Google or any kind of point of reference. third project and my last and for this one you see mountains this is a place that we like to stay and we like to visit and so as far as perspective 
I did this um, completely from memory. And up here is where we like to stay. And my perception when, when we stay here is, of, first and foremost, the beautiful views. But I often think about getting up to the top. And to me, it's the switchbacks. There's a road to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. And to me, that's always the most thrilling part of visiting here. So I started by sketching out what I want it to do. And so as you see, I started with the switchbacks and the roads, and then I decided I needed my mountains, and I needed the top of the mountain, and down below is a bridge and a river. So once I had that in place, I went through with some construction paper and I just kind of roughly cut out the mountains. One, two, three. Then I filled some of it in with some of it in with shading. And then I just kept adding um, paint, acrylic paint, and I used construction paper to cut out. So this is a combination of three-dimensional shapes glued on, as well as different paint. My clouds, my houses and um, I just kept adding. And this got a little bit wrinkled, but when I add it into a book and press it, it goes flat again. So again, this is not to scale either, but it's a, an area that I love to visit, and I really had a lot of fun making this. And I hope that you will think about making a spatial map of, a, about an, of an area that you enjoy. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope to see you next time.